Flicko. Crazy Mock said, what about mixing two low-end elements like a kick in an 808 or a kick in a bass? Everything can hit at the same time. And people love to talk with me about the side chaining thing. And to be real, if you kind of want to side chain your 808 to your kick, go ahead. If you're getting a sound doing that that you really like, go ahead. But my problem is with people who say, you can't have your kick and 808 hit at the same time. There's no way those two things can both hit in the same frequencies at the same time and both sound good. That's not true. People using side chaining as a band-aid to me is lame. Using side chaining as a production technique, go ahead. If it's creating a sound that you like or it's doing something to the feel of the track that the kick in the 808 or the kick in the bass sound weren't doing whenever they were just both hitting at the same time, if you have one of them ducking, that's great. But I think a lot of time people use side chain as a band-aid which means every time their kick punches, they can't feel it because the 808 attack and the kick aren't matching up well or there's some issue between the two. Um, some people sometimes pick a bad kick with a bad 808 or their kick and their 808 aren't lining up the same way. Their kick might be behind the 808. The 808 might be too far behind the kick. A lot of times, to be honest, these days with how 808s are these days in sample packs and how a lot of rap stuff is going, maybe you don't need a kick. And that's something with some people, if you're making some trap shit, you're making a Yeet beat, a Cardi beat, some shit for Little Baby, some shit for Drake, some shit for Kanye. There's a world you might not even need a kick. And you're trying to side chain a kick in an 808 to make your 808 punch harder, but you just need a better 808 with more attack on it. Or a better 808 sample that punches harder. Because a lot of the best shit right now is no kick. So for the person who asked that question, how do you make those two things work? It's about sample choice. It's about subtractive EQ. It's about leveling and volume. And it's about a lot of other stuff in your beat. So think of it this way. Let's say you have a really, really powerful kick sample. And then you have a really good 808 sample. And let's say they work well together. But whenever you're playing stuff in the beat, you can never really hear the kick clear enough. Or the 808 feels like it's front in front of the kick. Or you feel like you're getting all kick and there's not enough bass. And then when you turn stuff up, it's either way too loud or da 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 Whenever you're having that feeling... Your problem might not just be your kick and your 808. Could it be? Yeah, you might need a better sample. You might need a better bass or a better kick drum. But sometimes there might be another sound from your keys, another percussion thing from your drums, even a hi-hat that has a lot of low end randomly. There's a lot of other things that might be getting in the way. So here's my kick sample. I'll let you know, it's a really good kick. I've used it in a million beats. Okay, so you see the kick? Remember how I was talking about 100 hertz? Here's 100 hertz right here. So this is that band by itself. If you wanted to learn how to subtractive EQ, AKA get rid of something that hurts your ears. If you wanna make your beat sound better. This is a guitar right here. I've been doing this a long time. So there's things that in my brain instantly pop up, but what pops up in everybody's brain when you hear this? It's kind of high pitched. It's a little sharp, a little hissy. So this thing's a little harsh. It's a little sharp in your ear. If you turn this up really loud, you see how that pokes your ear? It kind of hurts in one part of your ear. That's resonance. This is what you're trying to get rid of. You're trying to get rid of that harsh shit. So check this out. Whenever I click um, this track that the sample's on, and then I look at my EQ, Pro Q3, I'll delete that point we made. This is what's happening. This is what's happening in this sample. This is what's going on. This is all the EQ bands. This is where they're hitting. Now look at this. Whenever you watch any EQ that any of y'all have ever watched in your whole life, what happens? The shit goes up. The spikes come up. They go down. As the song plays, they go with it. When it gets louder, they pop up more. When it gets quieter, they go lower. With something like this, Instantly, you can see there's a lot of spikes that are bigger than everywhere else right in this zone. From a, from a little under a 1,000 to right about 2K, there's a lot of harsh shit going on, a lot of really pokey shit. But look at this. You see all this info down here? This is all 100 hertz and below. We were talking about 100 hertz. That's where you would cut, you would cut out below 100 for a piano maybe, for a guitar. And 100 is a rough number that can change. It can be 90, it might be 110. It's different every beat. It's like picking a new kick sample and a new 808. Your EQ is not the same every time you make a song. It's different every time. 
Someone said you use EQ on pretty much every track. To be honest, I'm using EQ most times to fix stuff. And that's what we're talking about right now is how to fix shit that's or hurts my ears or make my shit hit harder. So check this out. If we're gonna use this kick and we're gonna use this guitar, we know that from looking at our kick EQ, where does our kick punch? All down here, all in this low 100 hertz or below 100 hertz. Our kick is hitting all in this low end. That's where our kick is punching. That's where you're feeling the kick. When you look at this, even though it's not super loud, is there a bunch of information over there? You hear all that? Is it super loud? No, but it's in the beat. And that's all low end. That's all shit that's not the main bit of the sound that we need. So if I go like this and I take a really hard cut and I just do right here, it says low cut and I cut that out. Let me ask you a question. Does this sound better or worse to you? Or does this sound any different at all? Doesn't really sound any different, right? This guitar basically still sounds the same. You're still getting all the info. You're still getting everything. But now we've cut out a lot of shit. So what are, you, what are we saying here? We're saying that we just got rid of a bunch of unnecessary low-end, bullshit, nasty noise that was being made in our beat. But this guitar still sounds great. It still sounds exactly like it sounded when we drag it in. But we just got rid of a whole bunch of shit and all of a sudden it sounds better? What does that make you think about all your beats when you've never done EQ? How much shit is probably adding up? Shit from the guitars, shit from the drums, shit from basses, shit from everything. You have these little frequencies that you might not even be listening to on that one instrument. You might not even be listening to the really low end of your Yeet Cardi synth. You're listening to the 808 and you're listening to the mids and the high end of the synth. Cut out some of that low end of the synth and your 808 is going to get way bigger. Because now my kick now isn't fighting with any of this information. The only thing that's being heard now in that small frequency band is my kick. Nothing else in the song is playing except for that kick in the low end. So my low end is clean and solid. That was a bigger picture thing. Cut some things that hurt or things that are getting in the way of other shit that don't need to be. Like, does your 808 need 10,000? Does your 808 need all this info up here or your kick? Look at like, let's say you're doing stuff with a lot of guitars, a lot of vocals, a lot of 10K to 15K high end stuff. You might want to start getting rid of shit that's from, like from your bass sounds or from some of the, the more powerful stuff, you might want to cut some highs. I'm not saying to do this with everything, but I don't need any of that. My kick doesn't sound any different. My kick's not punching way better now than right now. It's the same, but I just got rid of a bunch of noise. I just got rid of a bunch of frequency. The more you start to do that, things sound like they intend to. Whenever you guys sit down to make a beat, you're like, okay, I got a kick, an 808, a hi-hat, a clap, a lead sound. Your clap should be the only thing smacking. You know what I mean? Like your clap shouldn't be fighting with the pokey shit that's going on in your lead sound because then your clap doesn't hit as hard. Your 808 shouldn't be fighting with your piano because then your 808 can't hit. Your kick and your 808 shouldn't be fighting with each other and that's why people sidechain, because they figure there's no way that those two things can both punch in the same place, in the same EQ curve, and work together. But they can. It doesn't mean one thing goes in every uh, EQ band. All your vocals and your pianos and your drums Thank you. are all going to be hitting at 100 hertz, 200 hertz, 300 hertz at the same time. But it's just about how you stack things up, how you pan things. Remember, a lot of people are asking me for advice on how to make their beat sound better and everything in their beat is in the center if you take these guitars and you take these guitars and go and pan those guitars on one side and then you take maybe another layer of this guitar duplicate it maybe do the same layer or do an octave i don't know now my guitars are panned on either side and the only thing in the middle are my drums you can still hear my guitars really clearly, but there's nothing fighting for the stereo field. So now we're clearing up frequencies that are fighting with each other, and we're clearing up how stuff is sitting, the sound staging. Yeah, so we're, we're clearing up all these drums and all these guitars. We're all just center, the same frequencies hitting, mad lows hitting from the pianos, mad lows hitting from the 808s, whatever. 
now we've panned our stuff we've gotten rid of some frequencies you're making your beat sound incredibly better this eq teaches you visually how to make your shit sound better whenever you play something and you're looking at an eq all it does is play the thing you see all the spikes and then they go away right now when i stop it all those spikes went away in this eq if you hold your mouse over the area where all those spikes are if you hold your mouse over the information it keeps everything frozen look it's freezing all those points so look what i can do now i can go to this point i can click it and i can give myself an eq curve it just pointed out this resonance point for us listen how bad this sounds this is in that guitar you hear this you hear how bad that sounds? You hear how that sounds horrible? We don't want that. We don't want that in our guitars. We want to get rid of that. Look at this. We don't want that shit. We want that out of there. All that's going to do is hurt your fucking ears. So what we're going to do is we're going to click those resonance points. And we're not going to drag them all the way down. We're just going to make them a little more even with each other. So nothing's poking out as crazy as it was. We're just going to bring shit down a little bit. But we know we're clicking specifically the points we need. Let me show you the difference between what that guitar sounds like before we edited it and after. Now here's after. Same volume. Do you see how it's easier to listen to? It's the same volume. It's just as loud. It's not less loud now. We didn't make it quieter. You can turn it up now. Now you can make it way louder. Now you can make your 808 and your kick louder. Now you can make other things louder. Now, you know that f the worst feeling when you're making a beat and nothing feels loud in your speakers, but you're already in the red? This is how you fix that. This is the fix. EQing, subtractive EQ, getting rid of some resonance, getting all the lows out of your synth sounds, your key sounds, all that stuff, letting your 808s hit, picking the right kick for the right 808. You can turn your beat way louder, way better, way cleaner in a couple steps. Doing this stuff takes it from you having a Drake Take Keith song to you having a beat that sounds unprofessional. Whenever your 808 and your drums sound perfect and clear and they ring exactly how you want them to and blah, 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 like it's a big difference when people hear your music even if it seems like just a background thing. This has nothing to do with your ideas. This has nothing to do with your melodies. This has nothing to do with the tempo. This has nothing to do with what type of beat you're making. This is just making your music sound better.